Hello, tech world. This is Tech Thoughts, and welcome to this special Tech Thoughts video series focused on learning PowerShell. This is an operationally designed video series that aims to get you ramped up in using PowerShell quickly. This is the first video in the series, the three commands that you'll need to learn to start using PowerShell. As always, the corresponding article for this topic can be found on the techthoughts.info blog, which I've linked in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. I encourage you to follow along. It's one of the best ways to learn, and in order to do that, you are going to need PowerShell. If you're on a Windows device, that ships natively as part of the operating system. You can come over to the Start menu, type in PowerShell, and get a console session launched relatively quickly. Notice that I have a few different versions of PowerShell here, PowerShell 7 and Windows PowerShell. In this series, I'll be covering the differences between the two in more detail, so make sure to subscribe to check out that information. If you're on a Mac OS or if you are using Linux, there's a couple more steps that you'll need to take, but it's a very simple download and install process, and I've linked guides in the description below to get you started on that process. But once you have it installed, it's very easy to launch the terminal window and you'll have PowerShell up and running in no time. So before we dive into the three commands that you'll need to learn to start using PowerShell, I want to take a moment to just go over some of the basics. And the first thing is that PowerShell commands are referred to as commandlets. We can go ahead and run one right now, and that'll be git time zone. So if we click enter, you'll notice that this returns an object because PowerShell does deal with objects. And this particular object contains data about the time zone configuration of this particular device. So if you followed along, congrats, you just ran your first commandlet. The other thing about commandlets is they follow a certain structure. PowerShell is designed to be very easy and accessible, and it follows a verb noun structure, which makes it a little bit easier to learn. So if we look at this git, that's our verb. That's the action that's being done. And then our noun is time zone. That's the thing that's going to be acting against. And so we can infer a couple things because of this verb noun relationship. The first is that because it's using git, we can kind of infer that this is a read only action and it isn't going to change anything on our device if we run a git command. We can also infer based on the git that there might be a more actionable verb like set. So we might check to see if there's a set time zone using IntelliSense. So I'm going to start typing using set time, and I'm going to use tab on my keyboard for auto completion. And we see that in fact, there is a set time zone. So even if you don't have all the commands memorized, which is not very likely, you can infer based on the verb noun relationship, what available commandlets there might be to you. So again, PowerShell is designed to be extremely accessible. It's designed to make you faster, quicker, more accurate. And to that end, there's really only three commands that you need to understand to start using it pretty effectively. And the first one is git command. We'll go ahead and clear the screen using clear. This is one that you'll just have to memorize. And based off the verb noun that we learned a moment ago, we can infer that this is going to git some commands. And if we use a common programming tactic of using an asterisk, which acts as a wild card, What's going to happen right now is that this is going to get every single commandlet that's available on this particular device. So if we click enter, you'll notice that this is going to return every single command that this device is capable of running currently. So that could be pretty interesting to explore as you find out what commands are possible, but most of the time you'll be focused on trying to accomplish a certain task. So let's go ahead and clear again, and let's see if we try to focus on, say, processes. Does this box have the ability to run commands related to processes? So we'll use wildcards again, and I'll run git command and wrap the word process in wildcard asterisk. So again, this commandlet using verb noun is going to be acting against this particular wildcard name and seeing if there's any commandlets that contain this word process and we'll go ahead and click enter. We can see pretty unsurprisingly that we do have a couple of commandlets that are capable of doing things with processes on our system. 
We have git process. We have start process, stop process. And of course, all of these adhere to that verb noun relationship that we discussed a moment ago. As someone new to PowerShell, you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's great, but I don't have a lot of confidence that, for example, start process does what I think it does. The verb noun is nice, but maybe I'm wrong and I don't want to break something. Well, that's where the second command comes in, and that is git help. So before we get started running git help, it's a good idea to run update help to make sure you have all of the latest help files. In older versions of PowerShell, you will need to launch PowerShell as an administrator to run this commandlet. So on a Windows device, you would need to find your launch console, and then right click and run as administrator. That's how you would launch a PowerShell window as admin inside of Windows. And here you can see this is delineated with the administrator prefix, letting you know that this console session is running as administrator. In modern versions of PowerShell, you can just run update help. So I'm going to control C and run update help. This commandlet will go out and fetch all of the help files for all of the commands, making sure that you have the latest help that's the most accurate. On the Linux side of things, you would simply run update help and it will update all available help files as well. Okay, with update help complete, what we can do now is verify if our theory is correct. Does, for example, stop process do what we think it's going to do? So we can simply type in git dash help, the second command that you're going to need to memorize and then follow that with stop process. And if we click enter, what you'll see here is a synopsis of what stop process does. It stops one or more running processes. Below, you'll find a more in-depth description about what the commandlet does, and you're welcome to read through that. I wanted to draw your attention to the bottom though, where the remarks will highlight the fact that you can run git help stop process examples. So this examples here is a parameter and it's specifying to get help to take an additional action on this commandlet. So we'll do git help stop process dash examples. And because we provided the examples parameter this time, we get several examples that are provided back as a result. So we'll see an example of stop process name notepad. And this is how you would go ahead and stop a notepad process. And again, because this is using an action verb of stop, we can infer that this is going to take an action against our machine, whereas git is read only. So armed with these two commandlets, git command and git help, you can basically teach yourself every single command that's on the box. Linux users, nothing changes for you. These commands work exactly the same. This is one of the empowering things about PowerShell. Learning one language enables you to perform actions on both operating systems. So using, for example, git process, we can see processes on Linux just as we did on Windows a moment ago. So now we know how to find commands and how to evaluate if they do what we think they do. The last command, that we need to learn, and we'll go ahead and clear the screen with clear, is going to be git member. Git member is the more complicated of the three. So as discussed previously, PowerShell deals with objects. And we saw a moment ago that git time zone returned an object. But what type of object was that? Well, we can use git member to evaluate what type of object we're dealing with. So if I run git date, this appears to return some type of string that says it's Sunday, May 15th, 2022. But is this in fact a string? Well, let's evaluate it with git member. So we'll do git date and we will do git dash member. Don't worry too much about what this is right here right now. We'll get to this in great detail in a later lesson. So make sure to continue in the series to learn more about what we're doing with this pipeline. So we will pipe git date to git member. 
And if we click enter, we get a lot of stuff returned, but I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to evaluate the results of this. So the first thing if we scroll up is that get date is returning a system dot date time object. This is the type of object that is returned to us. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of methods that we can do against this particular object. But for the purposes of this lesson, I wanna draw your attention to the properties of this object down at the bottom. Note that this object, the date time object, has many different properties. It has date, day, day of week, day of year, hour, kind, millisecond. So this is a very complex data object and it contains a lot of information about the date. Now, some commands like get date only return the information that PowerShell thinks that you're most likely going to want, which you know is a very nicely displayed date time string format. If we instead pipe get date to format list, and again, stay tuned for future videos as we discuss this more in depth. You'll notice that we do indeed get back all of those properties that Git member advised us on. These same properties were available in the object all along. It was just structured a little bit differently because PowerShell thinks that's probably what we want to see. But that data is still available in all of the object returns. You just need to go retrieve it. And you'll note that Git member did indeed advise us correctly. And all of those properties are present in the Git date object return. Now let's look at a more simple object like Git random. Git random is a commandlet that will return some random number. Again, if you're not sure, we can always git dash help git random. And as I stated, according to the synopsis, it gets a random number. But what type of object does it return? So we'll get random and pipe that to get member. And you'll notice that this will return a system in 32. So this is not a complex object. Notice that it has several methods, but no additional properties. This is a very simple object. It is simply an integer 32 number type. So working with objects in PowerShell is very important and it's important to understand what type of object that you're working with. Git member can help you do that. These are the three commandlets that if you know, you can pretty much evaluate everything that you need to do in PowerShell. And that's git command, git dash help, and git member. One thing to watch out for is that git commands sometimes will not always find exactly what you're looking for. For example, if we wanted to do something with a file and maybe evaluate a file and find out some information about it, you might try searching for something like git command with wildcard file. And as you evaluate some of these, you may find that some of them don't necessarily give you exactly what you want. There is not, for example, a git dash file commandlet. So sometimes even armed with git command, you won't be able to find necessarily the exact command that you're looking for. That's not a big deal. Simply come back to Google and fire up a quick search and say something like PowerShell git file information. This will very quickly lead you to the correct commandlet. And if you're not sure that this does what you think it does, you can of course copy it and run a git help against it. It gets the properties of a specified item. And if we run this with the examples parameter, we can see some examples of this git command against various different files. So this seems to be what we're after. And you can safely run this because we understand the verb noun, and this is going to be read only against a file it is not going to make any changes. Okay, so I will leave you with one bonus commandlet. PowerShell can't do everything, right? Or can it? So for example, native PowerShell is unable to send Telegram messages. It just can't. However, PowerShell does have the ability to install modules. And those modules can provide a lot more power to PowerShell. So our final bonus commandlet is find module. 
And if we provide it the parameter tag, we can look up something like Telegram and see if there's a module out there on the PowerShell gallery that is capable of adding Telegram capabilities to PowerShell. If you can think of it, most likely someone out there has written the capability. So find module is a fantastic commandlet to know. Now, you may be thinking, if I do find a module that has the capability I want, how do I get it installed? Well, now that you understand how to use git command, git help, and git member, you have all the tools necessary to figure out how to get that module installed yourself. Hint, there's probably a commandlet for that. Don't forget that all of this information is available in written format on the techthoughts.info blog. And if you found this video helpful, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe for more Tech Thoughts videos.